Hello and uh, welcome to my video. Um, let me just get a couple of disclaimers out of the way first, right? If you're going to attempt this, right, you've got to be aware that if you get a blockage in your radi in your radiator or in any of your pipes, this could explode and some boiling water burning, scalding anyone. Yeah. So you do this at your own risk. Um, now, if you're going to try and distill anything other than water for your cooling system, I would advise not to use your radiator, but this is going to be fine for our purposes because the radiator contains lead So, with all the solder joints, so don't be uh, drinking any of it, any of what you um, distill out of here, whether it be water or any other substance. <laughs> right, so I'm going to go through what we're going to need now. Um, what I've got is some um, PETG tubing or whatever it's called and two, two of the PETG fittings I've also got a female to female G1 quarter thread so this is all stuff you should be familiar with already the water cooling and one of these which you should be familiar with for your power supply um, obviously you need a radiator and two fans um, you're going to need your silicon bending thing for your PPG tubing or you might be able to do it without I've not tried and now this as you can see is uh, stainless steel inside I bought this from um, a local supermarket called Asda. <laughs> um, I've sanded, because as you can see it's painted, so I've sanded the uh, paint off the bottom already. I've already done that before we started the video, but you can get similar sorts of things just in plain stainless steel. So um, get that out of the way. Now, what else you're going to need, which I haven't got at the moment on me, I've got it near, it's all right. Um, going to need a drill and you're going to need you could use a standard 13 milli drill bit but I'm going to use these step bits what I've got it's slightly up you don't need it quite 13 mil, but 13 mil will do for our purposes, right? So first things first, I've got me my cooker on there to bend this tubing, but I'm not going to do that quite yet because I want to make measure some things because I'm going to have to find um, what. Well, I'll show you in a minute. <laughs> right. So let's get this in first of all. Right, so, first of all, let's just move this out of the way. I'm going to drill. Now this one goes up to 12 milli. Right, start again. Right, so I've got that to 12 mil. Let me just see if uh, my fitting fits in. Nope. So, I need to go a little bit further. So 
I'm going to use this one. She's just graduated so we can... Whoops. Right, so... Try that, see if we've made it big enough. Should just about be if I can screw it in, I think. Uh, maybe a little bit bigger. Right. Right, there we go. So now, I'm going to uh, seal this up. Hold on, I've got a bear on the inside, so I'm going to have to uh, drill this way nearly again. Side, which is going to interfere with interfere with our fitting I think but if you drill from the other side you sort of uh, take it off Right, um, don't want to make it too big though. Right. I think it should go on anyway. So what we're doing here is using a female to female G1 quarter fitting and I'm using the fitting for the Peter. Mine is 10, 10, 14 I think, 10 inner, 10, 14 outer and that will go in there like that. See, so you have that. And then... I seem to have lost my other fitting, but I think you get the idea. <laughs> well, we're going to attach the other fitting to the radiator here and um, put a bend in the pipe. So then we can, you're going to need something to, so you're going to have your radiator there like that and your thing there like that, basically. And then you're going to put your other fitting on here, if I can find where the mine's gone. Um, and basically you're going to put your tap water in here. Now if you, if you see that's quite a good fitting lid. So if you're going to buy a stainless steel one of these, you want to make sure it's got a nice tight fitting lid like that. But you, can, you could seal this up with a bit of PTFE tape if you wanted to. Um, if anybody wants me to um, show them how to turn this into an alcohol still, <laughs> I'd, I'd be willing to to show you how. But you wouldn't be using any of this. You'd need a proper copper coil, and you'd need you wouldn't be able to use any of these fittings with the rubber on them. So PTFE is the only thing that you can put inside that's plastic inside an alcohol still. So. Warning you now, you'll get lead poisoning if you try and distill any alcohol with this, but you can distill water. Now, you're going to want your heat on, um, when I get pour boiling water out of the kettle, put it on and just put it on a low light, so you're not, um, 
you're not boiling the, the heck out of it, but you are going to make some steam. Right now, I'm trying to find, because basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to find another container. I've got another one of these I could use, I suppose. So that, put it on here, maybe put it on here. Drip me water into there, but I'm going to need something to stabilise the radiator. So maybe I'm going to use a different catchment thing, I don't know, but because it's going to topple over, I think, with this. So I'm going to need something to support this with. But that could be anything. But that is how you're going to distill water. I'm going to finish it off. I've, I think I've explained how to do it, so. You shouldn't have any problems doing it like that. So basically you just want a, a, a piece of your tube in with a bend, a 90 degree bend in it, so that your radiator is going to be like this. And you want something to support the radiator. And then um, catch your, something to catch your, water, your distilled water in. So I'm going to leave that video there for now. I will do a, a, another video. I'll pause it actually and then I'll, I'll finish this off once I've found me another fitting. And um, I'll show you distilling some water. Right, as you can see, I've um, finished off uh, building this. Um, I'm using these are the pots to prop it on so I'm using one to catch it and one to prop it up on um, I've cut my tube in I managed to cut it with a pair of scissors because I couldn't find my uh, drill and I shall turn it round so you can see exactly what I've done so I've got my fans on there my PTG PETG tubing, I heated it up on the cooker to uh, be able to bend it. So I've got my fans on there, we're going to have to connect those up to my power supply. Then this is going to go on the cooker ring, like so. This is to hold it up, obviously. And the water is going to come out of here. So we'll get that set up now. Got me. Um, power supply here so you're going to need one of these bad boys which you should already have like I say this is all stuff that you uh, probably already have so it's not really going to cost you much to make some distilled water if you already have all these bits um, right, where are we? it's that one What I'm going to do, connect my fans up, right, so connected both my fans up to my power supply, so let's get them on. Right. Now I'm going to boil the kettle. Show you around here what we've got. Got this on the stove. My fans are all on. Got my collection pot there and my thing. These cost me twelve pound, by the way. These uh, these pots and a couple of quid for the fittings. Um, 
so these are all stuff that you may already have knocking about I expect you to all have a radiator although you might not want to take it out of your system but you can always uh, <coughs> buy one yourself buy one a cheap one just especially for doing this I mean this 240 mil radiator was only 20 odd quid so so it won't cost that much really to you can make as much distilled water I mean you take your radiator out you could make gallons of it and uh, then you wouldn't have to take your radiator apart uh, so often quite so often you know what I mean so but it's up to you I mean you can buy a radiator and fans and I've got uh, this one going for now I'm going to put my uh, cooker just, I'm going to put it on number two I think yeah you, you'll have to learn with your cooker what you need to where you need to put it but um, I think number two should be sufficient I think I'm going to put, uh, put you back in the pot now. So, I'm going, so obviously, to be careful with all this. To clean all the crap out. <laughs> so I'm going to fill this about three quarters of the way up. Maybe a little bit more, you don't want it too full. Put this over. And then uh, hopefully we should uh, we should start getting some uh, distilled water. I just uh, turn you a little bit so, so hopefully we'll be able to see it coming out. It will take a minute to who were. I'm gonna to have to fill that the bottom portion of the radiator up first as well. So basically if you if you put it on too much of a rolling boil, um it's gonna it's gonna superheat the, the steam for a start, so it's gonna be harder for it to cool down and um You know, if you put too much heat into it, it's, you know, it's not going to, you're only cooling it with, two, with a 240ml radiator, so. Uh, you can see we just got it on a gentle boil. You can see the steam coming up the tube, so hopefully it's not coming out of here, is it? Now, you don't want to block this end off if you know if you block that end off you're gonna get this exploding like I said in the disclaimer at the beginning of the video so you want to make sure your radiator is not blocked but uh, then you look we should soon start to see uh, some distilled water coming out. Maybe turn it up one more notch, see if we get it going a bit quicker. You just don't want it to boil too violently, you see. If anybody wants to see me make uh, an alcohol, distilled alcohol with this. Uh, my tubing's going soft. Yeah. Oh, well, there's a first problem. <laughs> it appears the tubing is going soft, so maybe we might be better using some uh, copper or something. But, you know, it's going to work. Won't look pretty, but, you know, it's not what we're here for, is it? So if we leave that to run now, we should get some uh, distilled water. What I'll do is I'll pause the video now and I'll wait for something to start coming out and then I'll restart this. Oops. Right, so as you may be able to see in a minute, I do 
I have started to get water coming out. Looks like it might just, there we go, bit coming out there now. So uh, that is how we get distilled water. Now, you do have to be aware this uh, PT tubing has gone soft. I thought it might be able to withstand a bit more heat than that, but it has actually got, gone a bit floppy. So uh, I would advise maybe using some metal tubing for it, but you know, um, you have to keep in mind you've got to refill this, so refill your pot here. So be aware that does get hot, so you will have to use something heat proof to uh, take the lid off and uh, obviously be careful what you're doing because it is boiling water. So you can see we're getting our distilled water going through there now. Nice and slow, it takes a long time, but you know, it's free, <laughs> it's not four pound odd for a litre, <laughs> put it that way, and that's if you can find it. I mean, uh, you can get deionized water from, um, from like Halfords or B&Q, maybe, I don't know, but um, yeah, so there we have it. That's how you get distilled water if you've got none available in your area. Um, yeah, so like, I will um, try and make this out of uh, metal tubing and uh, get back to you and show you how to do that. But I'm sure you can all work it out from there. I'm gonna show you how to distill stuff that's drinkable <laughs> if you would like to. Um, and uh, I'll see you again.